We had many plans to play in North America, but this is like the first plan that came through. And we're really glad to do it in Canada, actually, because this is a bit unusual. Usually you go first to the States. We had a really good time here. The fans are really behind us, and we like it very much. And I think the show was uh, average to okay. So, uh, yeah, we're a bit more critical about us. And I think it's really great, and we really enjoyed it playing here first time. How do the uh, fans compare in North America as opposed to back in Switzerland? Um, Germany has a very strong uh, heavy metal scene. Germany, Holland, Belgium, maybe, you know. And uh, the reaction is, is um, it's a bit different. Like, they, they headbang much more. <laughs> Fucking shut up here! <laughs> they, they headbang much more in Germany. But, like, the reaction, if you get them to sing along or something like that, uh, is here much bigger, you know. You never can get as, as many people in Germany singing a song or stuff. They just knew every word. They were singing with us. It was unbelievable. Thank you very much. Did you have any uh, plans to tour North America or Canada in the next little while? Yeah, we'll have a U.S. tour coming up in March, f uh, 15 to 20 dates, and uh, hopefully we'll hit uh, Canada again because uh, we also sell very well over here, and I think uh, the uh, agency will be setting up a tour for Canada again, you know. After this success here, I think it's really true. Why was there no other dates set, just this one in Montreal? Um, there were some dates planned, but they were cancelled, I think, because of uh, the uh, promoters of the shows. They didn't like heavy metal, as far as I heard, which isn't unusual. So uh, Quebec was cancelled, Toronto was cancelled. So yeah, so uh, we only played these uh, three dates in, in Montreal. And it makes us really sad, actually. Do you play much in Europe on a regular basis or anything? Um, like where we come from Switzerland, it's, it's difficult to get gigs if you're a hardcore band. But um, yeah, we, we have uh, we have some good tours in Europe because starting with Germany, there's a strong scene, and we'll uh, this was like the start of a new tour, which will be uh, mostly in Europe. It's called the Tragic Grenades Tour, and it will uh, leading us uh, through uh, Germany, maybe France. We played Italy before, and uh, yeah, you can quite uh, do a business in Europe. There's quite a scene. Over there. Okay, um, your second LP, Into Megatherian, has just been released to more than favorable reviews. Are you happy with the response on the album? Um, yeah, we're very happy with the response on the album, but uh, we're not happy with the album. <laughs> um, we expected much more from the production, and uh, we got into heavy differences with the producer, Horst Miller, and we'll be definitely never working with him again because we, uh, we really didn't understand his work, uh, his way of work. He wasn't uh, totally opposite to the band's ideas and uh, we felt that's really a bad uh, situation. And we think we'll uh, produce the next album ourselves uh, by using a real good sound engineer to get really down on tape what we want. We thought we should go for like uh, a production like a Moby Tales, a bit advanced with maybe a bit uh, better drum sound and a bit more outside influences. I just want to ask you about more details. Are you happy with that album? Yeah, we were very happy with the album. I think it's the best we came up at this time, you know. We, we couldn't do anything better then. And it was also the time when we happened to work really good together with the producer, which was the same producer. Uh, but I think the band has moved on in between in the meantime, and uh, now the producers, I think, uh, really into different ideas. And I think uh, from the songwriting um, to make a theater and it's a major step forward, but we think the production could be much better, actually. And we're really pleased about the reaction among the fans, actually. Okay, uh, lyrically, your songs tend to stay away from outright satanic lyrics, yeah. that kind of thing, and tend to deal more with... I was having trouble with finding exactly the right word, but true life <laughs> events that are yeah. taking place yeah. you know, in decryptive ways, for one. Yeah. Where do the ideas for that kind of stuff come from? Martin me uh, got uh, heavily influenced by the uh, ancient history, by uh, occultism, not only black, you know, occultism takes both white magic, black magic, white religions, black religion, and so on. We don't follow any religion, and so uh, we happen to know a bit, a bit more like only Satanism, you know, we don't follow, sat follow Satanism at all. And uh, a major influence is really ancient history because uh, there's a lot of occultism in there or esoteric, like uh, to say an example, like uh, stuff like the Bermuda Triangle or the Nazca Lines. And uh, reading books about that or uh, 
movies, all the stuff that is really a heavy influence in that. And uh, since we're into, into that uh, a long time before we founded the band, I think we have a, a good basic to write about that now as we have a band. I think that's the ideal theme to write about. And uh, we use often uh, stories like Childe Ray, histor historical stories or fantasy stories to bring over a message, you know. We, we, like, we like to pack a message with a story, you know. Bring it over into, in a story like we did Childe Ray. Where does the name Celtic Frost come from? What is it from? Um, yeah, it's, it's the same Celtic we, we used like um, as a symbol for uh, our interest in ancient history. Picked out the Celtics because uh, they had a high civilization. They had they had uh, language. They had uh, uh, these letter signs, all the stuff, and uh, we thought they were really a, a good symbol for all this ancient history. And frost to us means uh, being the end of the year when everything dies, like uh, every high culture died, you know. It's like uh, at the end of every high culture, it's an apocalypse, like at the end of the Egyptians, at the end of the Babylonians, at the end of the Celtics. And we believe also at the end of this civilization we're living in right now. So we, we took Frost as like the end of a, of, a, of a big time, of a big civilization. And we thought Celtic Frost is a bit symbolic for boss, for the history and uh, this meaning of apocalypse. Yeah, um Back to Switzerland, is there much uh, in the way of hardcore metal bands coming out of Switzerland? Because basically all I've heard is... Uh, <laughs> well, um, no, there's not a lot of hardcore bands. Uh, since, since we started with Hellhammer, um, there were some hardcore bands founded, actually. There's a band called Messiah, after this, after this Hellhammer song. Hey. Fucking shut up, fucking... I know. <laughs> there's this band Messiah, founded after the famous Hellhammer song. And uh, they happen to be pretty hard, a bit in the way of Possessed Slayer. But I think that's the only band you can take serious out of Switzerland. You know, we had we had Crocus and that stuff, but they really move on in total different um, territory than we do. But the uh, hardcore scene is starting basically in, in Germany and, and France, and especially in Holland. You know, there are a lot of hardcore fans, but no hardcore. Uh, Band. Do you get, and you may have noticed tonight in, in the crowd tonight, there was a lot of punks. What do you think of the punk metal crossover? Um, I liked, I liked bands like Discharge when I started playing in my own bands. But I, uh, I don't like punk at all. I think um, we were pretty heavy, but I think playing heavy metal, it should still be music and not only uh, heavy noise, you know. Uh, that, I don't like punk at all and uh, I don't mind if, if punks come to our concerts. I mean, we play music for the people that, that like our music, who like our music. But me personally, I don't like punk and I don't listen to punk, you know. I have, uh, to go into that, I have influence like uh, Roxy Music, Frank Sinatra, I listen at home. And I'll lose every fan if I say that now, you know. But I think uh, the proof is our records. We don't get softer through that, but we just have total different uh, influences. And I think that makes us so unusual. Being, being uh, without these punk influences. What do you think of the slam dancing situation? <laughs> I think it's kind of funny, you know. We have that also in Germany and uh, sometimes in Switzerland. Uh, I think it's fucking dangerous and uh, if they don't care about their health, why not doing it, you know? I'm, I'm enjoying it if the fans go get uh, totally carried away by our music. It shows that, that they really feel our music, not only listen to it, but I think it's... Uh, it's maybe giving, being realistic, it's maybe giving heavy metal a bad, bad image, you know. If somebody gets hurt or so, uh, it can really hurt heavy metal, you know. But uh, I think if, if they like to do it, why not, you know. It's, it's funny to see them and uh, these people are totally into thrash metal and why not uh, supporting them, you know. Uh, how did you get uh, H.R. Geiger artwork for your new album? We thought uh, H.R. Geiger is uh, absolutely in the same uh, style uh, like we are mentally, you know. And uh, we happened to contact him with Hellhammer, and uh, he mostly liked our lyrics, you know, because they were uh, telling a lot of stuff he was trying to tell with his pictures. And I think he also liked songs like Dance Macabre, like these horror stuffs, like She's in a Prophet's Dream, these uh, very avant-gardistic songs which aren't heavy metal at all, like these horror soundtracks we made. And I think he liked that a lot, and he gave us 
we got into contact with him and we got along with him very well. We have to really be really grateful to him because he, he gave us these two pictures as a gift. We didn't have to pay. And uh, I think that's because he likes the band so much, you know. And uh, really, we're really on, on one line together mentally, I think. And we admire that fact very much, you know. We're really proud to have that and we're really glad that HR Giggle likes it. You know? Um, musically speaking, bands like Slayer or Metallica have spawned a lot of clone bands, for lack of a better word. And I don't see too many bands imitating the Frost sound. Would you attribute that to anything? Um, yeah. I mean, uh, as far as us copying other bands, I think, as I told you, we have very, very different influences like the other bands. It's maybe dangerous to say that to the fans, but we have total different influences. Reed was playing, Reed was studying classic, classical music. He has studied conduction of classical orchestras, and he was studying uh, classical drumming, and he played in jazz fusion bands. And uh, I come basically from funk. I listened to hardcore metal since 1973. I started with Black Sabbath, was what was the heaviest at this time, but parallel to this, I also listened to funk. Or, like I said, Frank Sinatra, even Frank Sinatra, you won't believe that. He's one of my biggest vocal influences. And I like Bram Ferry of Roxy Music. And uh, Martin loves a lot of New Wave, which is very uncommon among heavy metal. And uh, I think we created uh, some kind of unique style. And uh, we come here and we see bands playing Celtic Frost covers, like up to six Celtic Frost covers. And also in Germany, there's a lot of bands copying us, and I think. I think that's a good sign if, band cop, if bands copy you. Know? I think that that's uh, showing that you get accepted with your own style. You've heard of a band from Toronto called Slaughter? Yeah, they are doing Massacre, and I think in the Crypts of Race. Yeah, they're pretty much thrashed. They're one of the fastest bands I ever heard. I got a demo at home. They even The voice sounds even, even like me, you know. I was totally surprised when I heard them first. Yes, yeah, Strapato, I think it's called. Yeah, I have a batch of them, and yeah, I think uh, if, if we meet them, I think we will be really good friends. You know, I mean, we're really proud. They play songs of us, and they like us. You know, we really like that. We admire that. Do you have any plans to record like video or anything? I heard there was some TV, yeah. TV show in Germany that was around. We had, we had uh, a TV show in Switzerland playing into Crips of Race. And uh, as far as TV shows, we just had this interview here in Canadian television. I think it will be broadcast Wednesday after after the show here. I think they show some some pictures out of the show. I'm not sure. And uh, we'll have the offer from Noise Records uh, to do a 30 minutes video, and we plan it to be 50 minutes live and 50 minutes acting, cut into each other. You know, so uh, it's like a extended video clip because we try to uh, sh uh, act act a bit on our lyrics to uh, we try to bring over our lyrics a bit you know not only playing live like every other band does it but we try to get because the lyrics are very important to us so we try to get uh, get over the lyrics also a bit in the pictures but uh, the problem is we have we have a lot of projects going on we work on the new album very hard and we have this tragical serenades tour which is very long and uh, yeah. Yeah, next album will be called uh, Into the Pandemonium, means way into the hell, you know, translated. And uh, I think this album will be the definite uh, Celtic Frost album ever. We're really uh, looking forward to this album and uh, we're going to make it uh, very heavy for ourselves because we try to get, we, we try to top the material we had on To Make It Theory on. Yeah, he's totally into Van Halen. That's also an outside influence. I'm also totally into Van Halen. Even if they're commercial, they can't play, man. But uh, yeah, this album will have uh, 8 to 10 songs. And uh, the cover will be a real surprise, I think, again. And uh, yeah, we're working at it right now. We have a new song which we didn't play tonight because we think it's too fresh. It's called Orbital Journey. Yeah, I think it will be really a really unique album, and uh, as we had on this album, we'll be using horns, violin, timp timpanis, kettle drums, you know. We had no opera singer, which we will be using on the next album also. We'll be using a church uh, choir, choir, and uh, I think it will be pretty unusual. And a normal guard heavy metal album, but still heavy as hell. It will be out next uh, July or August. You, uh, on, on Into Megatherium, there was an old Hellhammer song on there. Will we be seeing any more 
he thinks. Things like uh, Buried and Forgotten. Yeah. yeah, we had this song Buried and Forgotten, which we thought it's, it's lost in Hellhammer, so we did rewrite it on the new album. We did uh, Necromantical Screams with the songs. And uh, we had on Morbid Tales, we had uh, Death from the Emperor, which was an old Hellhammer song rewritten. And we had uh, Visions of Mortality, which was the last Hellhammer song I ever wrote. And they thought this one, this song wouldn't be uh, f wouldn't be fitting into Hellhammer, so we put it in uh, Moby Tales. And maybe we, we're gonna rewrite one more Hellhammer track. You know, we're not uh, without any ideas, so we don't have to uh, take all Hellhammer, uh, Hellhammer material. But maybe it's like a tradition, and maybe we take another Hellhammer song. But it's not sure right now. Okay, what would be the ultimate goal of the Celtic Frost concept? Um, breaking out of the hardcore scene without selling out. You know, uh, as you may, as you uh, noticed on the la new, n latest album, we have horns. Like the, the opening of the album is totally a uh, avant-gardistic song. It's ha it has nothing to do with hardcore metal, because we still can bang to it. It's like a fantasy opening. We have these horns, we have these timpanis, we have violin, we have this opera singing. We have songs like Dance Macabre and uh, Tears in the Prophet's Stream, which are totally weird, like a uh, soundtrack. Uh, that's our way of trying to break out of the hardcore scene, getting a bigger audience, spreading, spreading this kind of music to a bigger audience without selling out the band, without wimping out, you know. Because we hate bands who sell out their character, who move away from their basic fans, you know. We, f we think that's really uh, destroying your following if you, if you wimp out as a hardcore band. So we try to stay heavy but getting really original ideas in our music which uh, helps us break out into a bigger heavy metal scene and maybe even uh, breaking into a new wave scene or uh, breaking into a jazz scene even. We don't know, you know. In uh, Europe we have quite a lot uh, new wave following. I don't, uh, I don't know if, if you can imagine that here in, in the United States, but in Europe we have a lot of new wave fans coming to our gigs. Um, uh, let me just uh, say something, being American. You know, in Europe, if you go to someone's house, you can go to a young girl's house and she'll have jazz records, hard rock, heavy metal, uh, classic, and, and ballads in the same record collection. You know, uh, yeah, I mean, in America, you know, if you go to a girl's house, she has either easy listening or she has, she's like jazz. But in Europe, they listen to everything. They have a real collection, you know, of everything. It's really, that's something unique. I gotta say that in America, you don't have that someone likes jazz or they like rock or they like blues. But they never have like one of each or 20 of each. In Europe, you have that. There's no possibility to survive as a, as a band by only being stuck to the hardcore scene as much as we like the hardcore scene. I mean, these are our 100% true fans and these are the fans who made us big. But you can't survive as a band if you're only stuck to the hardcore scene. And we believe it's possible without selling out the band, breaking out of the scene by being really original and by carrying on with, with whole different ideas to all the other bands and I think like Black Sabbath when they came out first they were one of the heaviest bands ever but they made it into the charts into like the official charts with uh, like songs like Paranoid or Iron Man and these songs were like total hardcore at this time but they made it in the official charts and I think if you're really as original like maybe Black Sabbath we maybe got a chance to break out of, of this hardcore scene without um, selling out and uh, without um, cheating our uh, hardcore fans. That's really the goal of Celtic Frost.